Morning, welcome back to the channel. So today's gonna start out a little different. We're driving up to a good client of mine up in McKinney, Texas, and we're gonna go take a look at some cool stuff he has. He has a multiple supercars, multiple planes, and a crazy watch collection. So it's gonna be pretty exciting. Stay tuned and we'll take you through it. First, real quick, we gotta go pick up the man of the hour. We gotta go get Marco, and then he's gonna come with and uh, help us walk us through that watch collection. Good. We're here in a private airport. We're not annexed by any city. We've been, this has been here since late 70s. There are people that live here. I've been here for about eight years. I own several hangars on this road. This is a private airport, privately owned, but it's open to public. This is sort of kind of my uh, hangout spot, happy spot. You know, we have a lot of cookout and stuff. You've seen this airplane. Uh, you've seen the, uh, the classic 42. This is a uh, brand new 2022 Ferrari F8. We ordered this car a couple of years ago. It took two years for it to get here because of the pandemic. And I don't know how you all know Ferrari situation. Mm -hmm. I think Rolex may have sort of yeah. tried to mimic the Ferrari. Wait, Ferrari yeah. Yeah. So Ferrari doesn't build any uh, spec cars. Every Ferrari that's built worldwide is built for somebody. In other words, dealers don't go and order inventory. Right, right, right. And then Ferrari's pretty picky as who they sell cars to. Just a game that you have to play after you remember a family and then there's a certain amount of time that you have to hold on to the Ferrari or sell it back to them. So this is a custom build spec, brand new. We got it a few months ago. Like I said, it took a couple of years. And that's the last V8 that Ferrari's going to make. Yeah. to build. So it's going to hold its value like crazy. Well, yeah. it's already, if you look at open market, this car's probably uh, depreciated 50, 60 percent. What color is it? This is called Blanco White. It's like a diamond white with a black uh, black painted roof, two-tone. Most Ferraris are red. White is what speak, spoke to me on this car. How many it's miles did you put on it? Uh, it's got about 1,400 miles. We drive the car. I drive my cars. And if you look inside the car. The interior, the two-tone with like the burgundy red kind of thing. Did you do that to match the plane? No, no. It's just, that's just okay. the way the color combination. The headliner is all Alcantara. It's not red, but it's like border red. Apple CarPlay is like a $5,000 option. Right. Uh, and it literally takes you hours to build a car at the studio. You were saying you got there early in the morning and you were there until yeah. like late afternoon? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Would it be too much to ask for a cold start? The cold start on the Ferrari is not as impressive as it is on the Ford GT. Now, if you want an awesome cold start, <laughs> this 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 is the this is the cold start king right here. Yeah. Of course, this is being YouTube and internet. Everyone's gonna criticize. Oh, you can't do that. It's it's fine. Oh, uh, right, right out of the rip here. Yeah, yeah, it's not gonna not gonna hurt you. Looking at the 2006. Ford GT in black. They made 4,000 cars total in 05 and 06. In 06, they made about 2,000 car supercharged. 5.4. This car has right around 18,000 miles. It's got a tune, it's got a pulley, it's got open exhaust, a few other modifications. And we've done about 10 or 15 things to this car to make it an everyday driver. Horsepower on this car, down or wide at 800 at the wheels. Drive it like we stole it. That smells incredible in there. Smell Give it a whiff. It almost smells like an Italian car. <laughs> Dave and I were at a car show the other day and he had his F8 there. And him and I were just kind of talking to a few people around us and then some random person just walks up opens his door and just sits in his ferrari without asking and it was just the most bizarre thing everyone was just kind of like shell-shocked yeah so yeah everyone, no one knew what to even say it was just like one of those common courtesy things before you sit in a multi hundred thousand dollar car i think you're supposed to take it out sweet so we've looked at some cool cars some timeless ones and then some modern classics and then obviously some crazy cool planes but now it's time to transition to looking at some cool watches the idea of the watch that's like really special to you okay so the watch that's really special to me and has always been uh has been the submariner this is a brand new 41. okay i uh, bought it uh early january from the local ad i've got a really good working rapport with them i've owned owned and wore a submariner since really early 80s yeah. first watch that i got was a two-tone uh day just right after high school and then i transitioned to a submariner i've always for the last 35 years i've always one a, a submariner and then as they upgraded and always 
bother. Like when they want to scramble serial code, right. when they want to crystal. So what, what yeah. got you into watches in general? Uh, I mean, it's just I always wanted a good timepiece. I think it was uh, something that I rewarded myself when I did some flight training uh, accomplishments, and I just always wanted to wear. You know, I don't wear any jewelry. I don't wear any uh, chains. I don't wear any rings, and just one subtle, you know. Yeah. watch and then the thing about Rolex was I knew that the money that I put into it I was always going to get out it wasn't going to be even back in the 80s that oh was yeah the absolutely it was like a, I was running a savings account back then you weren't really making any money but you weren't losing any either do you remember what the commemorative moment was that led you to buy that your first sub it's just that the watch spoke with me I had the financial means I made a little bit of money and it was like a, a piece that you wear that said well you've achieved a certain level of success at a young age, I was like in my early 20s. It's something that's reliable. It's something you wear every day. And you don't have to worry about it. Right. Exactly. You scratch it. On. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah you guys are subbing out, but I'm yeah, 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 two yeah, times on yeah, here with but, the planes. But the, so what watch would you say you wear the most? I acquired a uh, just a Datejust uh, travel watch, but I would say for day to day, it's going to be my sub date. This is a 90s, late 90s watch. It's a 36 millimeter uh, day date, aka President watch, and this is uh, where I wear on special occasions and on uh, dress watches and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Thirty-six. It looks like an MOP diamond bezel. Yep, yep. Mother of pearl, Roman numerals. Again, another timeless watch that Rolex has made. That you just can't go wrong. Since I built a relationship lately with the with the AD, I've been able to get a brand new uh, uh, Tuzi Bluzi 41 millimeter. Acquired one of these watches from you, then I had an opportunity on a second one. We just got this on nice. a trade. Did you get that uh, from us? Yeah, on a trade from you guys. These other two uh, uh, date just were just offered at the local AD. And Pump the brakes for one second. Is this the yeah? Deal? This oh, is the that was the one did that you got tell confusing. Him what happened? Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, I had to what explain a crazy everything. Situation. Well, I, I was on a road and I wasn't really <laughs> buying his story, but I was kind of rolling with it. No, it was <laughs> true. We were getting like it was the most bizarre thing yeah, I saw. Yeah, so I was just you know. It's one of the most bizarre situations. So he, so he, situations so he calls ever. me at 3:45. I'm about to go out of town and tells me about this deal. I'll try to wire you the money. Yeah. So I haul ass to the bank, and my banker happened to be there, and she happened to be cooperative, and she happened to just drop it. She was doing mm -hmm. our thing. We got the wire in like a few minutes before the bank actually. It was perfect act timing. Actually closed. Look at this one. Quiet. Tell me, tell me what's wrong with that picture? I think don't. we got him stumped. Yeah, no, don't. Some of those things me. hidden in plain sight. Just off the bat, is you got all the links on one side, which is going to make it wear <laughs> very unevenly. You see how that's level? Okay, hold that. <laughs> oh, you know. Of course, listen. If I have. But the thing is, I'm never... OCD. So this. Oh yeah. No <laughs> way. This is a huge. Uh, well, it's we'll... a hard pass. Yeah. Well, we'll fix that. As you guys saw, we got to see some beautiful planes, some beautiful cars, and some beautiful watches. So thank you so much, Dave, for having us out here. Yeah. Looking at that stuff was really cool. Um, it was just a huge pleasure. Awesome for y'all coming out. Show you some stuff you don't get to see. Talked watches, talked cars. You know, awesome morning.